Continuing the work on the Horus Warmeister miniature, and here's where the real main annoyance comes in. Painting the gold trim. This figure is 100% trim. He's the trim meister. Um, good lord, I was not looking forward to this part, and it was just so annoying trying to paint all this trim on this figure and doing it over a black uh, undercoat of the armor, um, just trying to find it all. I just, my eyes could not focus on it, all that just blackness, trying to pick out, you know, hair fine details. But, uh, yeah, well, have to get through all this. I originally started off painting it with the uh, AK Interactive's uh, True Metal Gold, which I have used in the past. Uh, it's a wax base paint, and for something like this, it is, oh good lord, I would have hate having to do this with normal acrylic paints, because the wax paint, it works the same way as a oil paint. Um, it's quite literally smooth as butter. Uh, it goes wherever you put it, it does not clump, it will not dry uh, for a couple days. It gives you plenty of working time to put it exactly where you want it. Uh, I initially started with that gold color and I did decide I wanted it a little bit darker. So at this stage here, uh, I've actually mixed in a little bit of MIG oil paint in with it. Some dark rust and you can see on the palette there the current mixture on the left and the uh, gold by itself on the right. So, uh, yeah, painting the trim here took a uh, number of days. After the first coat was dry, which uh, I let it dry pretty much 24 hours, you can spray it with a dull coat to speed up the time, but wasn't looking forward to getting back to this miniature anyway, but uh, Right now, we are applying a highlight using the straight uh, gold true metal color. And some of these areas actually kind of dry brushed, um, just cover them up. Uh, I would point out that at this point, the black armor is still not painted. Um, just trying to, I couldn't paint it, I couldn't highlight it because I couldn't pick it out from the trim. So that's why I decided to do all the trim first and then hopefully those areas that need to remain black would uh, be easier to find and detail out. So highlighting with the gold and then one little step I uh, skipped on the camera is gold mixing it with rub and buff silver for one final highlight. With the amount of detail in the trim it did need a, a little bit more shade and so Applying a wash of Vallejo sepia ink right now. First coat is going to be very thin, um, just an overall coat. Um, it kind of preps the surface for additional washes afterwards. And I actually only did about two uh, since I already highlighted the armor. I didn't have to shade it too much. But uh, after about two coats of sepia, I did it at the end of the miniature. I decided it still needed a bit more shade. So I went in with a little bit of black here and there. Uh, just to punch up the details of some of the more intricate trim areas. Finally, we could paint the black armor. First step was to go back and clean up any areas with black that were covered by the uh, gold paint or anything else. And for the highlights on the black, I don't want to over highlight the black too much because I don't want it clashing or appearing brighter than all the gold on the miniature. So I'm trying to keep it fairly muted using a mix of Vallejo Model Color Black, Vallejo Model Color Dark Prussian Blue, and Vallejo, excuse me, Vallejo Game Color uh, Shadow Gray. Then we follow that up with two additional highlights, adding a little bit more of shadow gray each time. Again, not too many areas to highlight, uh, but I do want a nice edge on the few areas that are not covered with trim, uh, mainly like the fingers, uh, there's those little channels that go down the uh, front upper portion of his legs, and uh, around the whole chest head covering uh, area.
Finally, we're on to the last part, which is the head. It's amazing, there's only like four main areas to paint on this miniature, but it just takes forever due to the amount of detail and extra attention all those areas need. For the head, I um, decided to have some fun. Not all the colors that you have to use have to say the what their purpose on the bottle is. Uh, flesh tones, for example. Rather than using my sunny flesh tone color or my mid-tone flesh color or something else, whatever it says in the bottle, I'm just putting some colors together and seeing what happens. So this is Vallejo Model Color Brown Sand, Game Color Parasite Brown, and Model Color Chocolate Brown. To that previous mix, I have now added a bit more of the brown sand and the Parasite Brown. And the goal here is to come up with something a bit more of a warm skin tone to it. Again, I really didn't have any plan in mind. All I knew is I didn't want pale. Everyone does pale, and I just want to experiment, have some fun, and see what we come up with. For the next step, now we're adding a little bit of game color pale flesh. I know I just said I didn't want to go pale, but... Uh, this is lightening up the colors. We're not going to go all the way up to pale. So we have a four color mixture now, which is totally fine. Uh, since this is a one off, I don't have to repeat this again. But uh, we're just slowly adding a lighter, very light flesh tone uh, color to it and you know, bringing up our skin tone to something a bit more realistic. It is a bit too dark, a little bit too orangey right now. more pale flesh added to the mixture now. Uh, this is a very slow process because I am I am adding a very, very light color to the mix I had before. If I add too much, it's gonna really screw things up. So using very thinned layers and slowly feathering it out into the uh, appropriate areas. Once again, adding more pale flesh. We're now getting very, very light here, so I don't want to go much further than this, but just adding a little bit of extra sunlight on uh, the standard uh, upper highlight areas, bridge of the nose, top of the cheeks, uh, chin, eyebrows, in this case, his uh, bald head. We got the face pretty much done, but it's looking a little bit washed out and a little lifeless, a little colorless, so we're gonna add some color back into it. Uh, Hall Red from the game, uh, excuse me, the Vallejo model color range. Very, very thin out. We're using just a very thin glaze here to add a little bit more color to the cheekbones and some of the recessed areas uh, around the back of the head. So, like I said, very light and about two coats in total. We follow that up with a second glaze, this time mixing in a little bit of game color uh, royal purple into our hall red. Uh, just add a, a little more definition, a uh, bit more color, uh, in this case like a cool color to the cheeks and some of the recesses. Uh, flesh tones, I, I can do a lot of different articles on flesh tones. I really haven't done much work with them personally myself, so I shouldn't be teaching them, but. There's a whole lot of different colors you can add to uh, to make flesh tones a bit more, not necessarily realistic, but a bit more interesting. Blues and purples and all sorts of colors and oranges like we did here, but you can go even further in the orange uh, range. Uh, definitely a topic I have to uh, address in the future. The last thing to do is a little bit of cleanup work. So going back to uh, our original base coat uh, quad color mixture that we had, and uh, very thin, I'm pretty much glazing it on, just cleaning up some areas uh, where I was a little bit too careless with the glaze, uh, and smoothing out some rough transitions between those colors. Mm -hmm. 
And there we are, we are done. Well, except for the base. Uh, again, had a lot of problems with this build. Uh, things just didn't go right, uh, especially the base, um, which I decided to leave out of this video. Uh, just a lot of problems trying to figure out the proper colors and what, trying to reach my idea, what uh, what I had in my head and trying to translate that into uh, reality didn't work out too well. Uh, I may release that video at a future date uh, if I feel like uh, bitching and moaning about the difficulties of painting versus making an online video, which are two separate things. But uh, in the meantime, let's just enjoy our spinny little finished Horus here. Again, fairly simple paint scheme. The main colors are just um, sort of the beige for the wolf, red, black, and gold. It sounds so simple on paper, but Forge World models, the, especially this one, I've worked on some before, but the amount of detail on this thing is frustrating. Oh, good lord. I really don't want to do another one of these. If someone paid me $500 to do another Horus model, I'll be like, no, not going to do it. But hope you enjoyed this, our little uh, bit more exceptional in the quality here than a lot of the other videos I do. I try mixing it up for you guys, you know, do some very simple ones that are just, you know, three or four layers. And every once in a while we get one here, which is 20 plus layers. But uh, that is it for now. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. See you again. Bye-bye.